Hello guys, welcome back to What If, and we return for the 11th instalment we are, and today we'll talk about a show that I've talked about recently, actually, I think last year actually, uh, on GoDisc, and this is a Jerry Anderson TV show. As the title suggests, I'm talking about Dick Spanner P.I. A stop motion TV, sh uh, TV show that Jerry Anderson and Terry Hadlam had made in the 80s, the mid-80s, about 85, 86, 87, around that time, and... Um, it's sort of a, a weird thing, actually, because it's never been mentioned really as much. It's like a forgotten piece of media, anyway. Uh, very lesser known, actually. You know, you think of Jerry Olsen, you think of Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet and the Mysterians. You think of Sp Space 1999. You think of Blavna Castle, for all people do. No one remembers Dick Spanner, really, in a way. Some people remember Terry Hawks, but they don't remember this show. About a robot pirate detective, very sort of tongue-in-cheek and very meta, in a way. And um, unintentionally funny, gag after gag, very funny stuff. I mentioned before the day a few actually, really, and um, you know, you know, um, it's they did quite. They think they did quite a few episodes actually, but they've only done like maybe four cases in total. If you if you've seen the box set, really, that like the like, complete collection that was you know released a couple of years, uh, quite a few years ago actually, twenty seventeen I think actually. Um, yeah, it's about, there's only four cases they ever did. I'm just thinking, like, what would they actually do if they continue with more, actually? Because they were planned to, but they got, it's all got aborted, I think, or stopped. Um, as in case we have uh, a case of the missing episode, really. So, because only one, one five-minute story was filmed of that, actually. And what would it, what would that, what would we have got beyond that? So here's the answer. Here's my sort of thing about it, really. So... Obviously, the first series came out in 86, 87, really, from around channel, with Channel 4, around midday. And you had two store, two cases span over, you know, 11 parts, like 11 part, like 11 part stories, believe it or not. Two serials, 11 parts, run for about five minutes. You had the case, you had the case of the human cannibal, and then the case, and the case of the Maltese parrot, as well, where Dick goes to Mexico to look for this, um, Human cannibal, uh, I forgot his name now. Some human cannibal, some you know, who basically fled to Mexico. And the sequel involves a uh, what was it? Um, some involves the Maltese parrot or something like that, something like that, really. Um, yeah, like do like do with I in goes to Ivy, Ivy Wood, sort of a, po um, a parody of Hollywood, really. So he ends up going to the, the glitz and glamour around that time, really. Um, so that would have been the, that's the first series actually at that time. That would have been that would have been the first batch. That first series would have been the, you know twenty two episodes, eleven part, two serials really. And they would have, I think they would have done they would have continued that sort of formula with the next one, really. So um, I'm not sure what the title is called on the third on the third one on the third case, but let's just clarify. So this third series it would have not featured Ray Chamberlain. Because Shane Murray, uh, he would have featured Jamie Hitchin. He appeared in Terry Hawks. But obviously from the, from the that first episode of the first series, that Kiss and the Missing episode, it sort of gives you the idea, really. It sort of, give, it sort of gives you, op opens the door, opens the window of what that series would have been like, actually. Another level part story, and that would have been um, Dick's set, set in Paris. It would have been set in France. And also um, would have been based on the... It's all parodied the... Um, uh, they have a Christie, Agatha Christie novel, Ten Little Indians. Anyway, or Ten Little Ends. I don't know. If it, it has different titles, really. You know? I don't know. Really, it's ever, that sort of thing. Um, there we go. Um, so it would have involved like that, and also the whole parody thing, of course, involving. You know, you got, you know, you got, you got Sherlock Holmes. You got Hercules Parrot as well, Mrs. Marvels as well. As this sort of like very tongue-in-cheek parody of famous detectives and everything else, you know. Um, you you know it would have been something interesting actually. Obviously, we never got that actually until until beyond that first part, of course. But it would have been interesting actually again. But what would, you know? Obviously, we sort of got the idea of what that third case would have been looked like. I don't know what the title was, but uh, um, you know. But it sort of sets a tone of what to expect, maybe expect from that story. It would have been said Paris. Involved in the you know the, the coming together of ten private detectives, all like the killing of the killer, like they slowly get killed by one by one by this mysterious assailant, 
and Dick has to basically solve the case, really, in his own blundering, obscure ways, really, which I find really fascinating. If you haven't seen Dick Spanner, give it a watch. Bizarre as hell, but it's funny and meta, and you feel like it's like it's a par it's a parody of detective stories, really. Um, indeed. Uh, so that was one of them, really. But what would we expect from the second case, really? I'm not too sure. Maybe something like Murder on the Orient Express. That would have been if you're trying to continue something like maybe an Agatha Christie style, or you or try and figure out like what can we parody next. Murder on the Orient Express might have been the obvious answer, really. That could be like the fourth one, involving going. It could have been something like on like on like a subway, like some new subway tra uh, train or something in the big in the big pair, which which is which is uh, where Dick Sp Spanner comes from. This Blade Runner universe called big, the Big Pair. It would have been interesting, you know, and. Um, that could be that could be one thing, you know, and uh, you, you know, so maybe it's on a subway train, and also just trying, you know, and everyone's murdered. I don't know, something like that, or something like you can do something like Sherlock Holmes, or do something like the Hand of the Bas Baskervilles. Maybe do something involving like a, I don't know, like a giant child or something like that, or something very obscure, something very weird like that. You like you know the child that's like the size of a. The size of a truck or something like that, you know, wandering the belief cornfields, cornfields or something like that. I don't know. It could be, you know, there could be some weird, you know, there could be some weird, some weird stuff going on. You know, you can, you can, you can take something out of the te detective stories. You know, Arthur Conan Doyle, Agatha Christie, some of the other famous ones again, like the Maltese Falcon, everything else, or something, you know, that type of thing. Um, you know, or other ones, I can't really name any of the detective novels, really, but you can just, you can parry them to death, you can do some weird stuff for them as well, do something like something obscure, um, that would have been interesting, it would have been 11 parts long, you only have to do two two stories, but split in like 11 parts, and continue with the fame, fame music, Jamie Hitchin might have done that one, I think in that in the, in the series, maybe Dick Spanner might return, um, Shane Rimmer, maybe might have returned for the, for the, for a third, third outing, for the third series, we don't ever know, really. Uh, something like that, you know. You know, for the third series, Jim Hitchin might do another one. I don't know, or somebody, or maybe somebody else who, another American actor, probably do like do like a similar thing what Shane Rimmer and Jamie Hitchin might have done, might continue that. You know, and Terry Allen might have done a lot more with it, of course. He did eventually, actually, because obviously, I mentioned in the, in the box, of course, he did this animatic storyboard comic book version, which is the case of Screaming Dane, which Shane Rimmer would return him, of course. You know, Terry Allen, did it on himself, did most of it himself, really. You know, this is rather, you know, without Jerry Anderson's involve, you know, involvement at that point. Uh, not so much animation, it was 2D, yet 2D animation, but it works. You know, obviously it has that same charm and wit um, that Terry Adam sort of incorporates within the, in the scripts and everything else with Shane Rimmer's voiceover and everything else. And yes, it would have been. It would have been interesting if it continued on, you know, that would have been something, you know, it's, a, it's another forgotten, part, for, forgotten piece of the 80s, really, you know, like a stop motion animation, like Tux, that's another thing, really. you know, that's another show. Obviously, now now I come to realise, you know, like, what was behind the production, of course, is a brilliant documentary on Tux, really, on the thing, like, you know, of everything else, like, what, of, a tr of its difficult, tricky production and everything else. Um, I'm not sure about Dick Spanner, really, uh, in a way. You know, I don't think it's an FML production unless they move up to a different project entirely together. Maybe this, like, you know, oh, we've done that bit, we'll leave it for now or something like that. But I think the idea, I think the thing with the whole that Jamie Hitchin series, of course, that might have been cut short. It may have, it might have not been, might have not worked out. We don't even know, really. But um, here we go. But it would have been interesting. So you would have, you know, the first series, Case of Human Cannonball and the Maltese Parrot in the first series. You would have got the. Ten Little Indians parody in Saint Paris uh, for the third series, of course, and maybe Murder of the Orient Express or whatever, really, for the second one, you know, for the fourth case, you know, and it would you might have continued on forever, really. You could continue on doing other stuff, really. You could have done again how the Baskervilles that could be something interesting. Um, what else? Maybe Murder on the Murder on the Nile. But something like that, you know. You can you can look you can look at the possibilities with Dick Spanner. You can parody. Anything, you know, these detective stuff, you know, old-fashioned detective stories, you can parry it, 
you know, you can parry that sort of, you know, parody this sort of thing. Punty spellings, you know, make it, twist it round, make it funny, parody the characters around it, of course. That would would have been interesting. And it would just be, you know, the one person. It would be Jet Shaman or Jimmy Hitchin, really. Or someone else entirely. We don't even know. So there we go, guys. That is the Expanded PI. I can't really say what it, it might be Series 3 and beyond, I'd probably say, actually. Um, I can't, I'm not sure what year, really, that will come out, really. I don't know. Beats me. Uh, but it would have been interesting, actually, where that that show would have gone, actually. You know, but shame was short. It was quite short-lived, really. You know, 20, 23 episodes in an animatic as well, really. So I think it's like 25 stories, I think, in, basically in total, really. But if it continued on, you know, for another, for another series of 22 episodes, two-part stories, would have been interesting. Would have been, would have been fascinating. <laughs> there we go, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. And I'll see you for the penultimate instalment of What If. See you guys.